Hello, my fellow gamers. This is Days. It has been a pet peeve of mine for a long time now, how entertainment in general, and video games in specific, have shifted from trying to make something fun to trying to condition your thinking. Over the past few years, it has become increasingly obvious to the point of being alarming how much of the video game industry's most successful and popular franchises have been going into refined, Stygian methods of brainwashing. Brainwashing meaning any attempt to influence or change your perception and attitude towards a subject through scientific techniques of behavioral modification. This will be a series that explores these themes by breaking them down technique by technique from the established mainstream procedures to the ones that have no name but everybody notices. So take a deep breath, maybe get a drink on the way, go ahead, pause the video, go get a drink, maybe some hot tea or something because we're about to go in for a dive. The reason I'm making this series is because it seems games have become better technically but a lot less fun. Other than multiplayer, which I love, most story-driven games, which I also love, have become torture to get through because it always feels like we're being attacked into adopting some form of philosophy or another. And there's a reason for this. We will be starting with an analysis of Life is Strange. Let's start with Life is Strange. We'll get into other games later. Specifically the opening sequence. I'm not going to show you every single bit of the game because it's quite tedious. But I'm just going to give you an overview of the repeated patterns used in the game to behaviorally prime you into submission. The rest is up to you. Alright, what do we have here? Starting with hallways and forests. What does that mean in psychoanalysis? Hallways and forests represent memories that are repressed, old and specifically uncomfortable. Forests are deep processes in the mind of the subconscious, namely sexuality, security, and validation. That was so surreal. How cute I looked, yeah. I was about to. You Welcome to looked. the real world. Welcome to the real world. Of course, that's the first thing you see. Which is the jock and the popular girl fighting. Because they can never get along, right? Followed by self-denigration and escapism. Plugging in earphones to drown the voices in her head that tell her that she's so shy. I hate that class. It's so fucking boring. She's so fucking shy. Listening to the depressing hipster type of music. Oh, did that sound observingly judgmental? Good, because that's going to set the tone for the rest of the video. In the meantime, let's explain the alpha state of the brain which is an idle state of sleepy wakefulness where you're receptive and prone to believe what you see without much questioning. This game is structured in a way where it puts the player through a chain of dreary tasks that give the illusion of making a significant impact in the storyline. P.S. Making an impact in the storyline based on your choices throughout the game is the selling point of episodic game. But here we're presented with long stretches of drudgery which usually end when used for brainwashing purposes with a loud and shocking assault on the senses like screaming death, a demon apparition or some kind of brutal sexual assault. This is done to make the viewer feel powerless and induce a state of trauma-like shock that goes immediately to the subconscious or at least restructure the perception of behavioral pattern of whoever is watching. Here she says, empty. Good. Nobody, Nobody can see my meltdown. meltdown. Yeah, no people equals good. That's exactly what a predator that is grooming you would want. They'd want you to separate from the group. Nanny? Nana? Nani? Oh, well, well, well. Well, you look at that. Most people are pretty desensitized to these symbols by now. And that's the plan. It's to make you not minded and brush them off as whatever. From now on, we're going to refer to symbols like this 
as a fair warning done in good faith. The warning is that this entire piece of work, be it a movie, a song, or video game in this case, is made for the express and sole purpose of behavioral engineering. And if you're, quote unquote, in the know, suspend your disbelief accordingly. This sign and its cousins, like the stag hat, skull, pentagram, the numbers 7, 13, and sometimes even the number 33, are basically a fair warning to anyone that is from, quote unquote, those who know. And these symbols and numbers are used by those who Just are loyal to Stop these allegiances. Yourself. You have a gift. Stop torturing yourself. You have a gift. And she proceeds to torture okay. herself and rip up her picture, which represents her gift. But why? She just said the opposite to herself. It's because negation doesn't register. You guys hear that? Negation does not register. Allow me to elaborate. If I tell you to not think of a white elephant, you will think of a white elephant. In fact, you are thinking of a white elephant right now. But if I really wanted you to not think of a white elephant, I would tell you to think of a red snake. See? That was easy, wasn't it? Negation does not register. It has the opposite effect on the mind. It's why people do what they're told not to do. Take this as a principle, if you will. Think of what good can you do, instead of what terrible, self-destructive things that you don't want to do. <laughs> okay, here she mentions the phrase, doors closing and windows opening. This is a suggestion technique used in hypnosis. And just in case you missed the last warning, here's another one. Now the blue butterfly, and the monarch butterfly in general, is a sneaky little inside symbol for pipeline-style brainwashing for the masses specifically involving unconditional, indiscriminate promiscuity, and relating it closely to punishment, self-destruction, and death as a retribution. And just so that you know that this game was made or funded by very nice people. It's cool, Nathan. Don't stress. You're okay, bro. Just count to three. Don't be scared. You own this school. If I wanted, I could blow it up. You're the boss. And here comes the fearless badass, Miss Chloe here. Hair dyed in the same color as the recently shown butterfly, making the association that Chloe will be an object of your sexual attraction. So Max follows the butterfly, and little did she know, she ends up in a hopeless situation. Following up on the connotation that this also happens with Chloe, now Chloe's appearance represents rebellion, aimless rebellion in her case, and her attire represents death and destruction, whereas Max, you, the player, you are helpless. You are the helpless little deer stuck in a hopeless situation. Because from the very beginning, you expect yourself, the protagonist, to be useless and weak and to fail. Which you do fail in the end, because the ending is in no way anything but a failure. But I guess life is just strange, huh? Moving on. We must note here that this is not plot related. You'll often see in these aggressive brainwashing fever dreams that plot is just an afterthought and that the writers visibly don't care about the events of the story leaving gaping holes that are usually never resolved or even mentioned again. You'll see this repeatedly in this so-called story. This is done purely for the purpose of behavioral engineering and it is done maliciously this case. In Chloe's first sentence, she subliminally makes the mental association that she has problems with her father figure, namely her step ass. This is made to manipulate the perception of whatever girl that is watching or playing to identify with this girl and all of the horrible stuff that she is about to do as a righteous answer to weakness. I wonder how many of them out there have father issues. Can you name one in your life? And this two second cut here is made to psychologically reinforce the mental association between following the butterfly and Miss Hella Cash here. By the way, the writers of this game are very proficient. It's just that their work is not focused on the plot or dialogue. These cuts are meticulously crafted mental association and trauma triggers. Talks to himself 
You don't know who the fuck I am or who you're messing around with. Where did you get that? What are you doing? Come on, put that thing down. Don't ever tell me what to do. I'm so sick of people trying to control me. You are going to get in hella more trouble for this than drugs. Nobody would ever even miss your punk ass, would they? Get that gun away from me, psycho! Oh, yes, of course. Because it makes total sense to push someone with a gun aimed and ready to shoot at arm's length. But hey, life is just a bit strange, isn't it? Whoa. What the fuck? I see you, Max Caulfield. Don't even think about leaving here until we talk about your entry. I'd never let one of photography's future stars avoid handing in her picture. I'm not avoiding, just... Biding time? Waiting for the elusive right moment? Exactly. Max, don't wait too long. John Lennon once said that life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. <laughs> are you serious? Of course, you are not part of life. And making plans is also not part of life. They're independent processes and not related to life in any way. Life is, of course, everything bad happening in the world. Thank you, John Lennon. Oh, since we're taking John Lennon as a great man who made great things. Max has an interdimensional power over time and space. And then instead of using it to win the lottery, which would be a very easy task with this power, and give Chloe all the hella cash she wants, and even buy her a new step ass, she uses this interdimensional power to settle arguments with her dumbass teacher, settle disputes with other students, trying to fix the emotional issues of her increasingly morally degenerate new best friend. Yay. So those people that are innocently coming to you for something that would constitute a meaningful experience and maybe through that experience gain some perspective over their life problems, instead what they get is this. Wow. For example, at a later part in the story, Max tries to do something good by bringing back Chloe's father. And just when you think you've reached the solution and you get the satisfaction of doing something good, which is fun by the way, let me reiterate that. Doing something good is fun. The game meaninglessly cripples Chloe, but I guess, hey, life is just strange, right? Life is strange. I mean, you save someone, someone else dies or gets crippled or some shit, right? And this has nothing to do with the agenda of the writers at all, right? So the game forces you to accept that everything is going to be shit. You're not allowed to reach a solution. You're not allowed to fix your life. You're only allowed to be demoralized. And listen to dumbass hipster music that makes you depressed at the end of the day. Fuck that music. That's all I'm saying. So even though the game pretends to be all about choice, but the only choice you have is to lose something. But I guess life is just strange, huh? They force you to accept things that are going to be bad. By accepting, either you choose this bad situation or this bad situation. Making you a hypocrite in both situations. Because it forces you to do what you essentially see as wrong. And it makes sure to give you the general impression that it's okay to do wrong things. The intended effect is to produce people who find themselves in situations where they tell themselves that, hmm, I had no other choice. Even though they always do. Because their life experience on morality 
has all been gathered from these artificial situations that molded and engineered their mental attitudes towards life and morality. It's not just the conclusion of the story either, but the whole game forces you to make these morally low, gray choices that you know and feel are bad by being stuck following a morally decrepit protagonist and her crazy self-destructive friend. This game, the people who wrote it, and the people who defend it. However, I'm not here just to point fingers. Sure, this seems a bit scary at first, that this stuff exists in the world and that it has this effect on human thinking and behavior, but I'm not here just to tell you this. I'm here to tell you how to protect yourself from it. Firstly, by identifying the patterns. Secondly, by being symbol literate. And thirdly, and most importantly, if you're gonna take anything from this video, just remember this thing. If you see stuff like this, now that you're wary of such things, meme it. Meme it until it dies begging for you to stop and then meme it some more on your way back home. Because if you tell someone that knowingly is doing something bad or evil, that they're bad or evil for doing it, they'll love it. Yeah, like give me more. They'll do it more and smile in your face just to spite you. Think about how many times that actually happened to you in your life or how many times you might have done it yourself. However, the key to break the spell, if you will, is to ridicule the person. Use the points you have against any immoral behavior as a point of dismissal and don't try to be nice about it. Meme it. Meme it hard and meme it long. That's the power of the meme, people. And wherever you find this sort of pattern in video games, please share it. Make fun of it so that we can maybe make the next video about these things and raise awareness about it. That's it for this one, guys. Expect more to come. This will be a series. Look forward to more. So make sure to that like button, that share button, and that subscribe button. Everybody, take care of yourself. Happy hunting. I'll see you guys in the next one.